Good morning, I am Vincent Bredis, Assistant AD for Strategic Communications here at BGSU. I'd like to welcome you to the introductory press conference for Todd Simon um, here overlooking Bill Frack Court inside the Stroh Center on the campus of Bowling Green State University. A uh, quick order of uh, how things will go. We'll have opening statements from Director of Athletics, Derek Vandermeer, followed by new head men's basketball coach, uh, Todd Simon. And then uh, we'll have a quick photo opportunity in between those opening statements. And then we will open it up to the media for questions and answers. So at this time, I'd like to introduce to the podium the Director of Athletics and Recreation at Bowling Green State University, Derek Vandermeer. Hello everyone, thank you very much for being here, appreciate it. i um, excited to be uh, at Bowling Green today. The so sun is out in the sky, so that means it's gonna be a great day and we have a great announcement today for you. Uh, first off, um, I just wanna appreciate you all for coming today. Uh, Dr. Rogers cannot be here today. He is um, currently on the road at an admissions event and also with fundraising, and so he wanted to uh, send his warm wishes. Uh, very excited about this day, and he's excited about Todd as well. Uh, but he just wanted to send his warm wishes for today. Um, so I, uh, to introduce Todd effectively, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story uh, about Todd Simon. Uh, because I, I want to tell you about the time that I first realized who Todd was. It's, a, it's, an, it's a great story because it, it's, a, it's something that's very notable for me. I accepted the Bowling Green State position in October. I was still in Arizona and it was a sunny 65 degree day. It was a Friday and I turned on a college basketball game. Uh, as a fan of college basketball, I wanted to see, you know, what Kansas had this year. They were ranked third in the country and they were playing this team, Southern Utah at Allen Fieldhouse. There were 6,300 people in the arena. Um, Kansas, top of the country, poised to, to obviously go for a national championship run this year. Um, and they were playing this team, and I didn't expect the game to last, my interest in the game to last very long. The game was scheduled for a 7.02 start time. I thought, okay, five minutes of this game, I think I'm gonna be good. I fully expected it to get out of control very fast. I thought I would watch the game, and then we'll see what happens. From tip off, that was not gonna be the story for that game. Up until that moment, I had no idea who Coach Todd Simon was. Our paths and history spaghetti through each other, but I've never met him. We've never talked. I never knew him. I knew Southern Utah as a historically mediocre team in the Big Sky Conference that had been climbing the charts in recent years. Other than that, I knew nothing about the program either. Since then, I've learned Southern Utah, Division I school, 13,000 students in a small town in Cedar City, Utah. I learned they host an annual Utah Shakespeare Festival during my research, so I've added that to the bucket list about visiting Cedar City at one point. Um, on that day, Kansas and Derek Vandermeer learned a lot about Coach Todd Simon in Southern Utah. There were seven lead changes in the game at 11 minutes in the game. Southern Utah was leading 22-16, 4-38. 35-21 at 35 seconds. SU was up, it was tied 39-39 at the half, 41-39. Second half, much of the same. A prize fight back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. At one minute left in the game, it was Kansas was leading by one point, number three team in the country. An absolute prize fight. Spellbound, watched the entire game. Southern Utah lost that game that day, but my education about Todd Simon and Southern Utah was complete. During the game, I, a slide popped up, identified the coach as Todd Simon, and I started doing my research from that very moment. He's not a one-hit wonder. He's not a one-game wonder. A celebrated high school head coach who went on to college coaching. He's been in Southern Utah for seven years, building a program from scratch. He started with a team that had not had a winning season, that had lost scholarships, had lost opportunities because of penalties, because of academic um, uh, underachievement a team that had limited resource, limited fans, a limited basketball identity and culture. I spent the entire game looking at the bench. You know, it's one thing as an administrator is you always watch the, the bench. One thing I've done over the years, um, sometimes I spend my time more watching coaches and the bench than I do the actual game. 
As the circus and excitement was building in that game, I saw players that were engaged. I saw passionate coaches. I saw a brotherhood on the bench cheering each other on, celebrating, pushing each other. I saw coaches engaged at every point of the game, sitting on their edge of the bench, absolutely into the game, communicating with the players, part of every single thing that was happening. I saw a team. I saw a great team culture. And I just kept staring at that coach as he was leading them in one heck of a game. I thought, that Todd Simon, man, he's special. There's something about him. I did not think about Todd Simon again after that game. But I started to realize who he was. 13 days ago, I made the decision to make a change to our coaching position. I knew the race was on. I knew the impact of our profession and what was happening nationally. I knew we needed to find someone that was special. During that 13 days, I'd like to thank my wife for her patience and her absent husband for 13 days. Um, but it was a grueling process of interviewing candidates from around the country. We hired collegiate sports associate, Todd and Drew Turner, great partners, worked with me in helping to identify a list. And I'd like to uh, say thank you to Deputy AD Stacy Koziak for being a part of the process, supporting me as we were putting this together. We immediately started to create that list of candidates. We had a diverse pool of candidates from around the country. We had Division II, we had Power Five, we have top assistants, we have top head coaches. We went after it from beginning and scrubbing each one of these candidates. We had 22 candidates at the start of the process. We started whittling it down and every step of the process, Todd's name started to rise. He was identified early um, by our search consultants and I was happy to see him on the list immediately because I knew a little bit about him. But the more I spoke to him, the more I engaged, the more we went through the process, I knew that there was a lot more to who he was. I also learned he was passionate about the community where he was living. He was a great partner with administrators and other coaches. He valued the student and the student athlete experience. He committed to academics. He was a person that was different, very, very different. He went to college in a full academic scholarship. He started coaching immediately when he went to college. His wife, Katie, was a valedictorian and was an English teacher. He values education. He values the academic mission of an institution. A final pool was presented to Dr. Rogers. Another round of interviews were conducted, and one sole name emerged, Todd Simon. It's an honor to have him today because we have a, we have a legacy that we have to maintain. We have great people that have their names on these, these facilities with Al Schmidt or Stroh family, with Bill Frack, people that have a big vision for what this should be each and every day. And it's bigger than just about winning. It's about this university, it's about this community, it's about this culture. It's about all of you today that want so much more for our student athletes each and every day. It's about team. It's about passion and culture. It's what I saw on that sideline against Kansas, a brotherhood. Today, I'd like to welcome our next, our 18th head coach, Todd Simon, his wife, Katie, Reese, Ryland, Ryder, Sophia. Welcome to Bowling Green State University. Well, that, that was great. I mean, the, the first thing that strikes me just as, as we've kind of gotten to town yesterday afternoon and, and, and kind of going through this process and, and, and as news kind of leaked, the, the, the spirit of the community and the passion has just been incredible, you know, and that's, and that's that, that, that community pride, the, the, you know, this Midwest uh, hospitality that, that, that is really kind of shown through. And, and I thank you all for that to start. But uh, um, but I'm honored and privileged to serve Bowling Green as the leader of men's basketball. And uh, the opportunity here is, is, going to, is such a special one. Because of all the community and, and all those uh, stakeholders and, and such a family program and, and doing our homework 
in, in talking to you know those that from the past and the present, everyone has the same thing to say. This is a special place. This is a an opportunity uh, for growth. There's a, there's a phenomenal leader. And he, as he kind of gone down the line, it, it just seemed like just the absolute right place at the right time. Uh, the enthusiasm has just been phenomenal, and and, and the the uh, love to my family has been outstanding. So uh, it was it was an absolute perfect fit as, as, for our you know our period of our lives to grow our family in this community. Um, our goal is to be you know Bowling Green's program, not. Our pro, not my program, not not the players' program. It it needs to be all of our program, and we, we want to represent the values of Bowling Green State University, and we want to be a a blue collar program that when you when you come to a game in those those 40 minutes, you're going to see, you know, uh, the uh, an all out effort. You're going to see uh, a passion. You want our players are going to play, you know, free and and, and uh, with joy, and and I think all those things that uh, you know that I've seen so far in, in 24 hours in, in this experience, I, th I think it's, it's going to be embodied with what we want to be on the floor. And uh, uh, it's going to be a program that you can be proud of. That when, when you go and say, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm from Bowling Green, they want them to say, they've got a heck of a basketball program. You know, and, that's, and that's our goal, to kind of get it to that point. And, and to everyone that loves this program, we, you know, we're going to need you. You know that, that that's my call for for everyone that loves Bowling Green to 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 provide us energy, to to help us uh, become champions. We're going to need that belief. We're going to need that encouragement, right? We're going to need the passion. You know that we we have an attitude that we're working toward championships. We're working toward victories, and and that. Uh, Everything that we do is going to be all inclusive, you know, for from for everyone. Because the foundation, you know, that we stand on today was built by the the alums, the former players, the boosters, the supporters. There's so much more to it than uh, than than just the product on the floor. And that's what we want to be about. Because I believe uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. And uh, so we're going to need that. We're going to need that ownership in the program. You know, the buy-in. We're, we we want to make this the golden era of Bowling Green basketball. Uh, well aware that that the, it's been a couple of years since we've been in the tournament, and and I think that's 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 appealing to me, right? Because it's uh, great things come to those who wait, and, and, and we've waited long enough, and and, and we want to take this program uh, to where where we, we believe we can take it, and uh, um, you know the the things that we're going to be about as a program. We talk about every day. Uh, Derek hit very, you know, something we, we write on the board every day before every game. We talk about it as a program. It's a brotherhood. It's a brotherhood. Everybody on the team, everybody is associated with the program has a role in this thing, right? Whether it be an energy giver, whether it be a, a uh, you know, uplifter, a communicator. It, there's so many roles that, that help and go into winning, and it's really a brotherhood. And, and, and it's not just the guy that gets 20. And, and, and that's what we're about. We're going to control our controllables. It's going to be an attitude and effort program. You know, we, we, no matter what the circumstances are, we're, we're going to do the right things. You know, we've got a saying, you can just do the next thing right. It's as close to perfect as you can be. And, and uh, we're be very forward thinking. We need to be cutting edge in, in, in all of our stuff, you know, our, our, whether it be basketball tactics or, or, or decision making off the floor. We need to be very forward thinking in, the, in this modern time of, of uh, college athletics. You know, we're going to play the right way on the floor. That's, uh, we, you know, we talk about that. If the man's open, he's got a better shot, he gets the ball. You know, and, and, and that buy-in and IQ, but it's more of, again, that brotherhood concept filtering down. We're going to win 365. You've got to win every day. You can't just wait till, till the next day. You've got to win the classroom. You've got be, you to make right decisions. We've got to really focus on, on doing everything right 365 days out of the year because that's how champions live. Uh, you know, we're, and we're, we're going to be more than basketball. It's going to be about life skills. It's going to be about you know putting guys in position to be successful in life because once we win championships and, and all those things, those things can wear away. But the relationships and, and the success in life and, and coming back and, and talking about that and, the, and that that camaraderie and hopefully that that permeates a lifetime. You know, I was on a call this morning with some of our 
uh, you know, former players and alums, and, and uh, you know, some some from all different eras. And this and that, that that needs to be the case, where this this is a special period of these young men's life, and, and that they want to be tied to Bowling Green forever. And uh, you know, we we our, our style of play, you know, we're going to play fast. For those that haven't seen us, we're, we're going to put up points, and and we don't we, we do what we do. You know, we're we were at Kansas, like I said, we you know. Derek watched it, but we, we well, you got to take the air out of the ball. Oh, you got to slow it down. You got to limit possessions. That's just not going to be the case. We're going to go, and we're going to score points. We're going to put pressure on the rim. You know, if we get a stop, we, you know, we we've got to make them pay, and, and and that's that's a big, big thing for me. You know, so we're, there's going to be zero laps in effort. We're, you know, we're always going to rebound. We're going to do these effort things very very well. We're going to be an intelligent team. We're going to know how to play. We're going we might not have the best five every game. But we, but we go into every game saying, we're, you know, we're going to be the better team. And this is a, this is a team, uh, team game. So we're going to be really focused on being that. We want to be a team that can shoot the ball. We're going to spread you out. We're going to be relentlessly enthusiastic. And that's what, you know, our bench culture. We get a bench warning every game. And if we don't, I'm disappointed. <laughs> right? it, 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 and no one ever makes a three in front of our bench. That's, that's our team rule. When that team goes that way, you don't get to make a three in front of a bench. We chart it. When it ha you know, it's happened, I think, once in 2022, 2021, and, and it was a problem. And we watched it on film and said, well, what are we doing here? Why are you sitting down? How did this guy shoot in front of you know?" And so th those things all matter because it's, it's that relentless enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, players play and tough players win. And that's just not physical toughness. That's mental toughness. That's emotional toughness. And, and, and so we're, we're kind of about all these things. And our goal is to make this – the, the, the Stroll Center, the most difficult place to play in, in this entire area, in the entire league. And uh, we went into our last stop, and, and, you know, it was not very many people at, at any of these games, and that was our vision. And we ended up 40-5 and five last three years at home and, and selling out the place and 2,000 students. And, and it, because this is as a holistic view of this thing, that's part of our role. You know, we're providing 15, 18, 20 home games a year needs to be a place where college students can make memories and everyone else as well but for the college students it's special when they can come and say you know what coming to this basketball game is 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 a highlight of of my my student experience and and we need to provide that and and that's what we want to do we we want to affect young people we want we as a program, we're going to lead the nation in relationships. We're never going to focus on what we don't have. We focus on what we do, and that's something that we can do. And, and that's a big saying for us. We, you know, we're going to enjoy this journey. We're going to enjoy each other. It's, it's not just uh, you know, come and prepare and play a game and, and all that good stuff. That's, that's, that stuff's wonderful, but it needs to be with passion. And this, this, and this thing's such a passion. I was having a conversation uh, last night, and it was like, I wish there was 50 hours in the day right now, because there's so much they want to do, you know, and because this is a passion, the building this program will be an absolute passion that I want, we'll have players, and, and we're already surrounded with so many great folks that are passionate, and, that, and that's what we want to be about, um, but, uh, you know, we're going to leave everything, everything on the floor, and, and every day in the office as, as a staff, we're going to do the same thing. You know, when we walk out that door, I want to imagine Derek, I want to imagine all the former players, and I want to imagine the president standing there and say, you know what, we didn't cheat you today. I mean, you got a, you got a, you got a full day's work. But, uh, you know, I want to thank Derek, President Rogers, you know, for this wonderful opportunity. I want to thank Southern Utah and Cedar City for seven great years. I want to thank my family, my folks that, that, that came up from uh, Michigan as well, which is, which is nice to be a couple hours up, you know, down the road. Uh, I want to thank Coach Huger and his staff. You know, they, they were admir did an admirable job with class. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Turners and College Sports Associates for their role in, in the search and, and, and the community for this just enthusiastic welcome. The spirit uh, is just incredible and mo very motivating. But the, 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 the foundation that was built by the players, the coaches, administrators, the supporters, we're going to honor that. We're going to honor that as a program and build and build to the next level. And uh, Bowling Green basketball will be a program of excellence. On the court, we're going to expect to win championships. In the classroom, we're going to expect student athletes to excel and graduate, and we'll be servant leaders and in enga in engaging in the community. Thank you so much for having me.
All right, we got members of the strategic communications staff, uh, Kyle Edmond, David Dietrich, they have microphones, so we're gonna open it up to questions to the media. So uh, ask your question, single them down. We're gonna ping pong back and forth uh, with questions, and when we're done with the Q&As, uh, we'll do some standalone interviews, uh, one-offs in front of the backdrop over there. So we're gonna start with the voice of the Falcons, Todd Walker, uh, followed by Michael Burwell from the Toledo Blade. After that, uh, just signal to your side and we'll get you the questions. Good morning, Coach. Welcome to BGSU. Uh, you talked about the, uh, the brotherhood and I, I wonder how that has changed, how you keep that brotherhood in recent years with so much turnover and the transfer portal and such. Uh, I imagine it's harder to build the brotherhood. Talk about how you've adapted to that in recent years, keeping that uh, in alive with your teams. You know, it, it, what we found, and, and, and we, didn't, we didn't know this going into it, but what we found is it's the, kind of the secret sauce to our success. We've had six COVID seniors, uh, four of which were 1,000 point scores, all returned to school. In, in, the, in the portal and the tampering age of what all that is, that, that, that was a big difference maker. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, I think these guys, when you, when you have a team that's close and a staff that's close, I think it makes it very difficult to leave because the experience is good. In fact, one of our former players who I absolutely beloved did leave and he called two days later and said, can I come back? He drove all the way to New York from Utah and got back in his car and drove all the way back to Utah and, uh, and even gave up the scholarship, said, I just want to be a part of it. And, and, I, and it wasn't necessarily what we do as the leader of the group. I think you get the right people in the room and, and you, you foster relationships. You know, the guys, that brotherhood kind of can be a secret weapon in this thing. And I think that's what we're going to focus on. Hi, Coach. Obviously, at Southern Utah, you know, obviously you're able to turn things around there. You know, what are just the main things, you know, from your coaching time there that can help here at Bowling Green as you, you know, try to turn the program around? Yeah, no, great question. It, it, there's, there's a lot of it, you know, just not only from a basketball strategic pro approach. You know, when I got there, uh, you know, I was a young coach. I was a very young coach. I, I kind of was thrown in the fire as the interim head coach at, at, at UNLV. And uh, when, when you're a young coach and, and you think you have a lot of the answers and then you go through things and the, that experience is your greatest teacher. And, you know, a year and a half in, kind of hit your stride a little bit. And you say, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. Because, you know, early on we were the number one defense in the big sky and, and we were long and athletic. And, and, and I said, you know what, I don't even like watching this. I mean, that's great. But I want to score. I like the X's and O's. I want to... Be, there's so much more strategically that opens up when you become a better scoring team. And that next year, sitting with some, some friends from the NBA, they said, why are you doing this yourself? <laughs> We'd sit here and talk. So what we became is, is, is more offensive oriented. And if you follow college basketball, they keep tweaking the rules to be pro offense. And uh, so, so with using that to our advantage, we went more pro offense. We were number three scoring team in the nation the very next year. And uh, went 20 and four, and I said that, that okay, that that worked. Okay, so we 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 have learned through those seven years, eight years now, of being a head coach of, of trials of uh, you know the guessing checks and all these things, and so we can apply that. We can apply that, and the, the building a program. Okay, hey, this didn't work. This will work, and and so we have a little bit more better of a clear blueprint now, going through that experience. Also, uh, introduce yourself and your media outlet uh, prior to any questions. Hey, Coach. Joel Sebastianelli with BCSN. Welcome to BG. You talked about what you were able to build at Southern Utah, but how were you able to build that? Like, what's that initial stage like when you're at a program where there's limited everything, including culture, to actually get guys to buy into what it is you're trying to build three, four, five, six, seven years down the line? Thanks, Joel. Uh, you're building one person at a time. You gotta win one person at a time. And, and that starts in the community, it starts off the court, you gotta get, and, and what you're, what you're, those wins are about believing. And, and I think 
when people start believing and say, hey, yeah, this is gonna work, it starts to manifest, it manifests itself into victories. And, and then so, you know, like I just tell a story just in the community because it's not just getting buy-in from the players and those type of things. That part's gonna come. The basketball's, you go from believing you're gonna lose to believing you can compete, to believing you can win, to believing you can win championships. And when we lost to Kansas, we were like, we, we had that, you know, 25 lead changes and the whole thing. It was no moral victory. We, we lost that game and said we were gonna see them in the tournament and we, we'll get them next time because we should have won that game. You know, that was our mentality because we believe we should win every game. And that's what we got to build, but it starts everywhere. You know, I think I've got a haircut from every uh, barber in, in Cedar City because I wanted to do, spread, spread the word that, hey, this is, this is something that's, that's going to be really special. You should come out and make sure you pass the word along, you know. So it's just those small victories. Uh, we'll go to Pat here and then Troy. Uh, Pat Eakin with uh, Bowling Green Sentinel Tribune. Um, what do you, growing up in Michigan, what do you know about the history here and how important it would be to bring back some of those glory days that were once here in men's basketball? Yeah, and, and I need to know more. I love the, the, the history and I love the, the deep dive and to really get to know people and, and, and kind of get the, uh, you know, some of the folklore even of, of, of the past. But I've enjoyed reading up and studying it. And being from this area, I kind of have a pretty solid familiarity. But, but looking at the history, that's what we can rekindle. You know, and, and we need to do it in a consistent basis. You know, it's, it, it, once we get a foundation laid, uh, this, it, it want it to become a thing where we're, we're the perennial team. And, and we're, we're the one that everyone says, well, MAC basketball is synonymous with Bowling Green. You know, and I think the MAC has, 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 is, is, is a great league, and, but I think we're positioned to do that. Got any other questions for, we got Clint over here. Coach Clint Corp, I host the morning show radio here in town. Welcome to Bowling Green, good to see you and the family here. Um, we see the uh, staff is here as well. Can you, have you made any decisions yet moving forward to kind of follow up on past decision there? Obviously your footprint here at home in the Midwest is somewhat limited, but is, uh, is there any thought process about how you can outreach into new athletes that may come here to Bowling Green State University and uh, building a staff moving forward as well. Yeah, we're kind of on the dust settling stage still. You know, this was a very quick process and, and uh, um, you know, so we're, we're kind of kind of sort those things out here. The next couple of days will be big logistic days and, you know, we have a lot of conversations and, and, and kind of see where the, the see where everything kind of settles. But uh, um, so not a lot of those decisions are made, but, you know, we certainly need to hit the ground running and get get into recruiting and and and, and really kind of get the, the word out uh, of of what we're trying to do in our program of of what how we play the style of play what we're doing in, in applying that to Bowling Green and getting in the world that's what it is but we'll have a wide net you know obviously you always want to be great in your region and um, but we'll also be a very wide net from you know at Southern Utah we got players for from you know, five continents, and, and it, it, that's a big deal just to be able to have a big net, you know, big wide net in 2023, I think you, is, is very wise. We have Steven in the back. Morning, my name is Steve Iwanek, sports director for Falcon Media. Derek, my question's for you. You know, you said you went through a very diligent process to find this next position, but it only took roughly two weeks to name Todd the head coach. What was it about Todd that stood out to you so quickly and made this decision so quick? Well, you know, Todd mentioned uh, the 50 hours in a day. That's, that's uh, when you start um, scrubbing people early and uh, scrubbing, I mean, you start talking to uh, people from around the country. Uh, the benefit of, you know, being in this profession and having been where I've been, I've engaged, I've had personal relationships, I've talked to or know people professionally across the WAC, across the Sky Conference, you know, across the, everybody that has touched him at some point has gone on to other places. And it's, um, you can do a lot of due diligence. So 
going through that process of um, rigorously looking, and it was a lot of candidates that we were looking at, you know, very, very cl clearly, because there, there is a certain type of person that I think is gonna fit really well here. One question I asked every single person that um, I interviewed, every person, Stacy's my witness, um, as I said, how do you get along with your volleyball coach and your women's basketball coach where you're at? Because I tell you what, we've got two great coaches, but that spirit of community, that spirit of we do this as a family together is something that I truly believe. And it's not just because, you, see, you can put John Wooden in the can, but if, if that person can't maintain relationships and doesn't truly value the student experience, so it was those metrics of walking through things that I'm absolutely passionate about, things I will not sacrifice for anything, but finding that all put together was really, really important. And his name just kept coming back back, back, is in the front of the pack, is it being a person that embraces the values of what I have learned Bowling Green is about. Michael? Question for Derek, uh, Michael Burrow with the Toledo Blade. Um, with this being your first big hire as athletic director here at Bowling Green, what maybe message do you think you sent the Bowling Green community and you know the college sports community with the hiring of Todd here? Um, well, I, I can tell you, I've, we have a lot, we have some head coaches here today. Um, I, I think that the one thing that every head coach who has met me since I've been here will tell you that there is, um, consistency is a very important thing to me. Uh, it's very, very important. Um, our staff are here. The one thing is, it's a message about excellence in everything that we do. That we will be about relationships and about people. Uh, we have to serve a community, uh, and they have very high expectations of the way that we need to behave, the way that we need to strive for excellence in everything that we do. And I, and I believe it, it's that we have to focus on our student athlete experience. It, the simple things, it's the metrics that I'm talking about. And, and I believe that uh, the message that I want um, everybody in our, and it includes me, it, it's everybody in our campus community to understand is that there is a way of doing business that we can hold ourselves accountable to and finding people that want to be a part of that vision uh, and, and willing to th strive together. And you can see that in, in everything our coaches are doing is they're, they're, they're getting engaged in our community, that our students are first. And, and, you know, and Todd talked about that today, building something around our students. They are the most valuable assets on this campus. They are truly the, the future and when you talk to alumni and donors and they talk about the experience of Bowling Green, it's the student experience. We have a responsibility to, um, to live up to that and to effectively ensure that all of us are working to make sure that experience is valuable. So he's aligned with that vision and that's why I'm so excited today to, to be a part of this. You know, Pat right here. Um, Pat, hold on. Um, this is for both of you. What can we do to, do you think we can do to get more students or more students uh, at the game? I mean, it's get the uh, pride for the athletics to bleed down into the student body um, because I'm sure the athletes would like, would appreciate it more if they had more student participation in the games. I'll jump, you know, first thing, the. I think it starts with our student athletes, and they're they're that's their peers, it, and and I think sometimes in athletics you 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 get a little bit of a silo mentality where here's the athletes, here's the student body, and even more now broken down into sports, and 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 our student athletes need to understand that hey these are your peers in the end, and we need to go support volleyball as a team. We need to be at the football game. We need to be. Uh, you know, add all the other sports, and, and, and you need to be immersed in the student community. If you do that, and now it becomes, you know, 10 of your friends, you know, from class or, or whatever may come. And then, you know, from the other sports, they start coming. And the next thing you know, you're building this, this uh, uh, you know, student body. Uh, and and we, these last couple games, we had at Southern Utah, we have over 2,000 students. It's a 10,000 people at the university total. And, 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 and but it didn't happen overnight. But it, what, what's really important is we have really good guys that, that you know, if you went to a, another sports game, they were there. 
and 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 we have to start there. And, and if you want them to be support you, you got to support them. And if we, so, if we start there and, and, and doing it organically from the inside out, I think it's going to start. But it's got to start one person at a time. We keep, we can't. It's not going to be artificial. You're going to have to make this fun. I think the the joy that we play with is infectious, and we need to play that way. You know, where you say, look at that group has fun. You know, a little over the top. They have fun. You know, and these games are fun, and this style of play is fun. You know, and so it has to be it, what you want. What you don't want this to be a go to college, watch Netflix on on Thursday night, and and then just recycle that over and over. You have to be able to provide an, an entertainment value as well to say, hey, this is this is better than just you know, let's get out of the dorm and, and come in here for two hours and yell and scream and be rowdy. And we we've got to, we've got to do that from the inside out. I, um, there's, historically, there was a group here called the Falcon Fanatics that was, was actually robust, it was growing, it was doing well. It's gone completely idle. Um, I've called members of that group from years ago and asked them that question. Why did you get involved? What was your, what was the condition that prompted your participation? And it was, one, the relationship with the staff. The, the staff engagement in the student experience. That it was, it was more than just about, you know, handing out free things. It was about student athletes and the staff that truly believed and cared about them. And that started a little bit of a movement. And then it was the ongoing engagement going across campus. I go, quit asking people to come support us. Let's go support them first. And that's, that's what he's bringing up first. Quit, quit asking people to come to you. Let's go. Let's go build those relationships. Let's be. Let's be. Uh, let's take some risks, but let, make sure our campus community know that we're part of them first and foremost. And we're going to go across the street or across that grassy area over there and make sure this campus sees us each and every day. And we have uh, some things that we're already laying out in our plan to start in April that it, we're going to be seen much more visible on this campus. Uh, we will transform this community because they'll know we care about their them and their experience first and foremost. All right, that's going to be uh, all the question, time we have for this portion of the uh, formal press conference. We appreciate you all coming. We'll uh, move to more of an informal uh, opportunity for some of the media over there. So thank you. Thank you.